Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah and I love everything creative. And I know a lot of you really enjoy my air dry clay projects. And so here in this video, I put together my top tips so you can access them all here in one place. If you've got an air dry clay project that you'd like to complete, then watch this all the way through and see my top tips for my air dry clay projects. If you do like my videos, then please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell too to be notified of all my next upcoming videos. I currently mainly use DAS air dry clay, so I know this one works well for me. So when you find a brand you love, then I recommend you stick with that one. Air dry clay is very forgiving and very versatile. So if you do make a mistake and you're not completely happy with it, then you can roll it back up and start again. The best thing to do when starting off with air dry clay is to start with simple and basic projects. Get used to rolling the clay and get used to the feel of the clay and how it behaves for you. Just have fun and enjoy yourself. I like to work my air dry clay on a nice smooth surface. So I always use tiles and these tiles are just bathroom tiles that are left over from our DIY projects. I use these tiles because this is what I have, but if you have a sheet of glass or a piece of plastic, then you can use that. Alternatively, I know people like to use a wooden chopping board or even a surface with a smooth cotton over the top and roll out onto that. I am a big believer in using what you have around your home for your projects, so you don't need any specialist equipment really. As long as you've got your clay and your hands, then you can create. Your hands are actually one of your best tools, but you will also need something for like a rolling pin, but you can use a bottle, a glass or a can or anything cylindrical to roll your clay out. You will also need something to cut your clay and it's not necessarily a knife you need. You can use a table knife to cut your clay, but to actually cut round some shapes, I quite like to use a paper clip or a pin. This easily lets you cut around your shape. I like to use a credit card for smoothing out, that works really well. You can even use a ruler to cut the clay. And you can find so many things around your home to imprint the clay with. I've done a little video on that, so I hope you've seen that, or if you haven't, please go and take a look. And you can experiment and try lots of different ways of imprinting your air dry clay. The items you do find around your home to use, then keep them all together in one box and just use those for your air dry clay projects. Don't go using your knives again back at the dinner table again. So keep them all together and use them for your air dry clay. When you open a fresh pack of clay, it's normally ready to use straight out of the packet. It's perfectly fine to use it out of the packet and you see many people doing that. But once we've taken some off and we've used some and then we roll it back up, we want to make sure we knead it and we wedge it back all together so that we have a nice smooth block. And so in this way, this is why we might knead the clay and condition the clay first. But I quite often, when I do get it out of the packet, quite like to condition the clay and just soften it up before we use it. Once you've done your project to keep the clay nice and fresh, make sure you roll everything back up all nice and neatly. And then I think it's best to place it back into the packet and then you can either wrap it into another bag or into a little Tupperware box and keep all of that air out and it should last indefinitely in the packet there and you can pick it up and use it again. But hopefully you've got so many more air dry clay projects to do that it won't get chance to dry out. For our air dry clay projects, we actually don't want to use too much water. Some people think that, oh, get it lovely and smooth, add lots of water, make it soft, but actually, that water will still need to evaporate. So a small bit of water on our finger to smooth out works wonders, but don't drench the air dry clay. So we just slightly moisten it as we go. Air dry clay is such an amazing craft and I love it so much. You can do so many different projects with it. And here on my channel, I do have lots of inspiration. So I hope you do go and take a look. Lots of people ask me if we can cover a vessel in air dry clay. 
Yes, we can, but it's not always the best solution because as the clay dries, it has to shrink and lose some of the moisture. So if you've covered a vessel really tightly with air dry clay, as the clay dries, the clay will shrink, so you will get cracks forming. And we need to expect those cracks when we have air dry clay that dries in that way, and so we can fix them. When sculpting a more detailed piece of air dry clay, you might like to add it on top of a little turntable and that can be as simple as a little lid. And so you would put your air dry clay on top and as you work on it, you have this to turn round. If you have a much larger air dry clay project that you want to complete and you know you're not going to complete it in one sitting, then of course you can complete one section of it and then you can either drape it in some plastic and some cloth and keep it moist or you can let it dry and then do the next part of it the next day. If you need to add um, wet clay to dry clay, then we just moisten the dry clay and add the wet, wet clay to it. Equally, if you want to take a break from your project, then drape your air dry clay in a damp cloth and take that little break and then come back to it. The question I get asked most of all is, is air dry clay food safe? I'm afraid I always have to say then no, it's not food safe. It's not been tested to that standard. So my choice is, no, I don't use air dry clay for food items. If you want to create a clay project like this to make a mug and such, then I recommend that you go to a potter's studio, use some stoneware clay, and then you fire that clay in a kiln. On another video, I shared with you my potter's wheel experience and I thoroughly recommend it. If you have a design that you want to keep repeating, then I recommend you making a small template or making a template for your item, just like I did for this Dashun pin. And I just created a template and I can create this little pin over and over again, reusing that template. As we work with the air dry clay, obviously it can get quite sticky and it gets all over our hands and then it dries onto our hands. So once you get that dried film on our hands and you want to get to the smoothing stage and the more detail stage, just keep going and washing those hands and removing all those flaky little bits. Otherwise, though that flaky dry clay gets on the nice smooth clay and doesn't go well with it. Exactly the same as in a potter's studio, when we want to attach two bits of clay together we use the score and slip method and so we use this with air dry clay as well and so we simply score the clay on both surfaces, add some clay slip which I have made a little video for, it's super easy to make. So make yourself some air dry clay slip and keep it in a little pot and then we use this air dry clay slip as the glue in between and then we can blend the two sides together and you should then get a nice bond between the two surfaces. When we've kneaded all the clay together sometimes there are little bubbles that stay within the clay and so don't worry if this happens when you're rolling out the clay and a little bubble might form at the top then just take a pin or a paper clip or a knife and pop the hole, squeeze the air out and then carry on. You can use your finger to blend over and pretend that bubble was never there. If you're trying to make something flat like a coaster, where the edges curl up instead of staying flat, that's all the moisture evaporating out of it and so it's drying too quickly. And so to eliminate this, if this does happen, you can take a small plank of wood or a book and you can put it on your clay and then just intermittently you want to turn the clay over and you do want to try and let the air get to it so that it does dry out. But I find if you just put a light weight on, maybe after a couple of hours of it drying, there shouldn't be any curving on your piece. Air dry clay wants to be dried slowly. I can't emphasise that enough. 
The slow drying of air dry clay prevents a lot of the problems. It prevents the curving and it prevents cracking. So if we can dry the air dry clay as slow as possible, then that works well. So don't be tempted to put it out in the sunlight. Don't be tempted to put it in a draft and don't be tempted to dry it with a hair dryer. All of those things will result in the bowing of the air dry clay or the cracking. So if we can dry it nice and slowly, some people like to put it in a cupboard and shut it away, or you can put drape something like a plastic bag over the top and just let the air gently dry it. So we don't want to speed up the process. We actually want to slow it down. Here in the UK, I tend to let my air dry clay pieces dry for probably two to four days to make sure they are fully dry. And once they are fully dry, they turn the white clay turns from a slight greyish to a white. And you will see that colour change no matter what colour air dry clay you're using. Once my air dry clay project is fully dry, I like to add some colour. I typically do this with acrylic paints and they work really well for me, but I know some people have noticed that they can peel and the paint peels off too easily with acrylic paints. I find if you use a nice lacquer or a varnish over the top, then they won't peel, they really won't peel at all. But if you don't get on well with acrylic paints, then why not try some watercolour paints? Because believe it or not, I've made them work without them reactivating. Alternatively, you could use some spray paint or I've done one where I did a marbling effect. That works really lovely. Or some acrylic gouache. Once you've finished your creation and you're nearly ready to let it dry, I just like to make sure I smooth mine out enough with a little bit of water on, on my fingers and I like to really smooth it out. That just makes sure that I don't have to sand too much afterwards. Of course, we can sand the air dry clay once dry, but if you smooth it out as much as possible before you let it dry, then that makes sure that we don't have to do too much sanding once it is dry. Once your project is fully dry, then I like to take a nice wet and dry black, really fine sandpaper and sand down the project. And so you can do this um, using a block or just using the sandpaper on your fingers. If you can roll your clay into slabs, then you can create so many different projects out of slabs of clay. When starting out with your air dry clay, you can go a little bit thicker. Don't go too thin. Then the walls of your pot or your vase will stand up a bit prouder and a bit easier. Whereas if you go a bit too thin, they're a bit flimsier. So always start thicker to begin with, and then you can work your way down and can do it a little thinner as you progress. When rolling out air dry clay, I always say to myself and I say to the kids when they're doing it, roll and turn, roll and turn. We don't want to squash that clay into the surface. We want to gently roll it and then we can turn it. And as we turn it, we make sure that clay is not stuck to the surface. It's nice and usable, just like baking cookies. You don't want to squash it into the surface so much that you can't remove it from the base. So we just roll lightly and turn, roll and turn, and we get a lovely, neat, finished slab that way too. For your clay slabs, to try and get an even thickness across the clay, you can add some lollipop sticks either side of your clay, take your rolling pin or alternative roller, and you can roll it over these lollipop sticks and you'll get a nice, even thickness. When designing your air dry clay project, it's a good idea to think of nice robust structures without any vulnerable little sections sticking out. For example, this pin, this kind of structure on it is quite vulnerable, but I just make sure as this is my pin, I just keep it here and I'm not going to let it fall on the floor. I'm not gonna let it break and it hasn't so far, so we're all good. But when making something that you might put on the side, just bear in mind that if someone's going to knock it now and again, if it's got some little delicate sections coming off of it, those might snap off. So I like to make my structures that are nice and sturdy. There's no little bit sticking off this and it's a perfect beginner project, this kind of one. If you haven't seen these already, then please do go and check out the free printables to be able to make your own little dishes like these.
This little house that I made isn't solid air dry clay and it's not hollow either. It's actually got polystyrene on the inside. And so I like to create some of my air dry clay projects. If they're a bit larger, I like to start off with an internal structure. This internal structure, as I said, is some polystyrene that was rescued from going in the bin. And you can also use wire and also tin foil works really well. So you'd scrunch the tin foil up form your basic shape and then you can cover it in the clay and this way you don't have to have that solid block of air dry clay because otherwise it would take far too long for that internal air dry clay to dry and another bonus is it makes your air dry clay pieces a lot lighter and also we don't have to use too much of the air dry clay either. So you would make your structure for the inside or make a wire armature and then we can add the air dry clay to a thickness of half a centimetre to a centimetre. We roll our slab of clay and then we can cover our items. And that works well for little sculptures and things like this. So you can start off with a base and then add air dry clay over the top. Once your air dry clay is fully dried, if you add any moisture to it again, it will absorb that moisture. So if you make a coaster and you don't varnish it or you don't seal it, and then you put your glass of water or your mug on top, then yes, the moisture will get into your air dry clay. And so this is why we seal the air dry clay. I like to use either a spray lacquer or a something like a polyurethane varnish. And I've used these in a lot of my other videos. And so that brings me on to the question I also get asked quite a lot is, can we use the air dry clay as a vase? And typically I say, well, it's quite good to put a vessel inside the air dry clay and then you can use it as a proper vase. But if you want to use it intermittently as a vase, then yes, I did do a little experiment on one of my other videos and I did get the air dry clay to become waterproof and I use polyurethane varnish for that. And in another video, I use the same polyurethane varnish to make my air dry clay waterproof to go outside and to make it weatherproof. And so you can check out that video too to see the experiment of how that worked. I have a few air dry clay pieces that are fully dried and I've not been that happy with once I've completed them and not felt a need to keep them. And I've managed to recycle those and turn them back into something else. And I have a video showing you how to rehydrate the clay and recycle the clay. And I love that one and I hope you can do that too. The most important thing with air dry clay and all your projects is to really just have fun. Experiment, feel the clay, enjoy it and just see what you create. Don't worry what the end result is, but just enjoy the process along the way. And then gradually you will get better and you will improve and that's satisfying in itself. So please do just go and enjoy. There are so many project ideas over on my channel, so please do have a look at all the rest of them. You can, you'll see on there the air dry clay playlist and you can work your way through those. And if you've got any ideas or anything else you'd like me to share, then please do comment below. Air dry clay really can be for everyone. It doesn't have to be for children. It doesn't just have to be for adults. Just explore and enjoy it. And it can be so therapeutic too, so I hope you do enjoy and get a lot of benefits from it. I really hope you found this video useful and took some tips and inspiration from it. If you have any other top tips, then please put them in the comments below so we can all see them and we can all share all our ideas together. And I hope you give a lot of the projects over on my channel a good go and come back and see some more as I make more. Thank you for watching and I hope you come back to see some more soon. Bye for now.